asshole. Does anybody have any questions for Ask a Christian? We're starting to ask a Christian versus the politics now. Nice. Hello. Hello. Hello, Goose. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm good. Is this like an event, or is it just like getting people to join the room? Yeah, this is an official server event. We're doing Ask a Christian versus politics. Oh, cool. Yeah. What questions do you have for Ask a Christian? Uh, nothing productive. Hey. But yeah, I mean, it's good to see you. Uh, you know, I guess uh, you know, one thing to mention is that you know, like God is good, right? God is holy. Um, so we should worship him, honor him, praise him, do all things for the Lord. Right. So, you know, that's that's just something for everybody to know. I don't even know if any like how many people are listening or if anyone's listening. That's okay. nice this is yeah. your audience to work work your audience huh sure sure so yeah i guess i'll i'll say uh some things for people um you know who are listening you know you should love god right love god who is good who is holy who is righteous you know who is worthy for all glory honor and praise you know life life apart from god um you know, it is meaningless, uh, it is purposeless, it is vacuous, it is slavery. Like, um, you know, often we'll ask questions, we'll say, okay, well, you know, what, what makes me valuable as a person? Say, well, you know, maybe I'm valuable because I'm with this girl, or maybe I'm valuable because I'm with this guy, valuable because of, like, the amount of wealth that I have, or political power, or that sort of thing. But to go and, uh, like, ground your identity in these transient things and these things that are passing um, is not good or it's not healthy. Uh, and I can give an example of why this is the case. Um, like, you know, this one time I was riding home uh, across the Brooklyn Bridge, it was the dead of winter. And there was this bundle of coats right at the bottom of the bridge. And so I rode by and I was just like, going to laugh to myself, you know, like crazy people these days. But I was like, hey, you know, I call myself a Christian. So, you know, I, I should at least go back and check on them, you know, make sure that they're okay. So, you know, I went back to, to check on them. And they were a lady um, who was lying there, uh, planning to freeze herself to death. Uh, you know, because her, her boyfriend of seven years uh, refused to marry her and you know that that's definitely you know sad um and and it's evil and it's tragic like i i think that you know like like you know he he should be able to, he should choose to marry her like within um you know within a year you know pretty soon on but yeah like her her value like she was you know she was she is still valuable her value is not determined by like being with that person and so that that's like you know something that we should all know that our value is more than uh you know than these transient things these things that are here today and gone tomorrow right our value is ultimately grounded in the nature and the being of god right and God's purchase price that he shed his blood on the cross, you know, for your sins and my sins. And when we accept that by faith, and though our sins are as scarlet, they are as white as snow. So there is no other hope, there is no other thing worthy of grounding our value in other than God himself. But yeah, so I guess, uh, do you guys have any questions or comments? Or we have, I guess, yeah, yammers or Okay. 
All right. Wait, uh, so uh, ask a Christian. I forgot. Uh, what denomination are you again? Uh, I'm a Presbyterian. So yeah. Uh, also, yeah, from Sola Scriptura, Sola Fide. Wait, uh, how, how did you uh find your way into Presbyterianism? Um, yeah, that's that's a good question. So, um, like I guess you know, I was just like Christian, but then before that, I just so I guess at the very beginning, you know, I believe in God. Um, I believe that I just had to be a good person, you know, like do a bunch of good deeds to build a staircase to heaven. And then I could knock on the pearly gates and say, hey, God, you know, let me in. But, uh, yeah, like that, that's not true. Right? You know, I, I did bad things. I realized that I was a wretch and a sinner. I deserved death and hellfire. Um, I couldn't pay for my the evils I'd done with good deeds. And then I realized what the whole, like, going to church, reading the Bible was about, was that I needed a savior. I need Jesus. So, you know, Ephesians 2, for by grace you're saved. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Um, and then, I guess, you know, that's when I accepted Christ. And then after that, uh, just continuing as, like, just being a Christian. Um, I, was like, uh, I was like a Baptist or non-denominational. Then I encountered re Reformed theology. And so in Reformed theology, it, it has a greater focus on the sovereignty of God, how God is in control, how he's elected, he's chosen his sheep before the foundation of the world. Um, it has a greater emphasis on how, let's see, if God has chosen his sheep before the foundation of the world. Um, what was the other thing? Yeah, it has an emphasis on how God works all things together for good, right, for those who love him. Um, how God restrains evil, uh, how God works all things together, uh, ultimately for his glory. So, yeah, I like have reformed... a question about that, about reformed theology. <laughs> well, wait, it... I have a quick, can I have a okay. really point that he, he said earlier. Oh, yeah, one, one thing, could yeah. you, uh, yeah, could you boot St. John, by the way? One uh, really good. Yeah, he thinks that I, I don't know why he does this. Yeah, but, you're right. No, I'd, I'd rather I'll, I'll, just mute, I'll just mute myself. Don't worry about it. Sure. Anyways, um, I was going to ask, isn't it a contradiction um, for God to predestine certain people for salvation and certain people for damnation, while at the same time saying in Scripture that he desires all to be saved? Oh, to predestine certain people for salvation and certain people for damnation. Um, yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, so I believe that in that scripture, at least from what I was hearing, is that I was talking about the, the community of believers, like all who are his sheep. Um, like, I guess I believe that's what I was talking about, but yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that is a good question, though. But I have to pull up the scriptures and look into it. Wait, well, yeah, how much of a... Uh, because Presbyterianism is like a branch of Calvinism, from what I understand. How, how, have you looked into the Calvinism much? Um. Yeah, I've looked into Calvin, Calvinism a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much like a baby reformed, so mm. I'm not super well-versed on that. Um, I mainly well, just then you know christianity that sort of thing but like you know calvinism that's still learning about what do you, what do you uh what do you think of uh redeem zoomer um i mean like i i like him but he he is uh overly friendly uh to roman catholicism um and eastern orthodoxy perhaps he can um, be saved still and, and uh, like he, he he doesn't stand very firmly with regards to sol sola fide and sola scriptura. Yeah. And sorry about all the background noise, but yeah, he uh, he doesn't sound stand very firmly on that. He uh, compromises a lot. It's just pretty uh, it's pretty sad, right? We need to stand firmly when it comes to sola fide, by faith alone in Christ alone, that Christ pays for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Um, this is an essential, right? This is something that 
you know, we cannot compromise on. It's only by the blood of Christ, right? The blood of Christ that saves us. Um, God provides the sacrifice, the Passover lamb. It's not that you provide the sacrifice. It's not your work. It's not my work. It's not uh, teamwork, but it's God's work, right? God shed his blood on the cross. He pays for our sins completely and totally. And when we accept that by faith, then though our sins are scarlet, they are as white as snow. So Redeemer, Redeemer plays a very dangerous game by, uh, you know, kind of waffling on this sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you said Sola Fide was the other one? Was it Sola Scriptura? Oh, yeah, what, what did you say? Sorry, uh, you, you said Sola Fide, and then the, was the other one Sola Scriptura, or what was the other Solo? Sola? Yes, Sola Scriptura. Yeah. So, right, because it's, it's like a common thing amongst uh, Reformed Protestants, right, Lutherans, and et cetera. But I suppose, uh, right, if, if the Bible is the infallible source of authority, right, but how how do you how how do you justify in your theology the 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 books of the Bible being uh like which books of the Bible should be in be in it? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So about like the canon of scripture. Um, so one is that like books they they can claim divine authorship. So like in Galatians, um, you know. Paul, he speaks about how God sent him uh, to preach the word. Um, Another thing is that we all have a relationship with God, right? You know, God, he has uh, written his law in our heart to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we know God, like, you know, you know God, the atheist, the Buddhist, the Muslim, the Christian, like every single person knows God, they have a relationship with God. They know that he is good. They know that he is holy, that he's righteous, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. So if we... um, you know, like, let's say if all of us here, right, we were on this isolated island uh, without the scriptures, without the Bible, uh, there would still be things that we would know beyond a shadow of doubt. Right? So, you know, like, let's say if you were to, like, cut off, like, my arm or, you know, I were to cut off your arm and we were to start beating each other on the head with our arms, like, what we would know that's wrong, right? you know, that's, uh, that's evil. And how we know that? Because God has revealed directly, right, to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then if we were to decide, okay, we're going to start worshiping like coconuts, like cows, like each other, well, we would also know that's wrong because we would know that in virtue of our relationship with God, right? To love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we have this direct um, relationship with God. God has directly revealed certain things to you uh, that you cannot be wrong about. And if we uh, deny that, well, then we're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Uh, we are denying that knowledge is infallible, that knowledge is that which you could not be wrong about. Um, we would be pro- proclaiming that knowledge is fallible, it's uncertain. And then if knowledge is uncertain, well, then you c- cannot know anything whatsoever. So it's Christ or chaos, right? We either accept that God is the source of knowledge, right? The source of certainty, or we reject that. And then we have no grounds by which to know anything whatsoever. So when we, when we go to the Bible, when we go to the scriptures, which is God inspired man to write down his words, the, the Bible is the voice of God. So when, when we go to the scriptures, we don't go alone, uh, but you go with God, right? And I go with God and we recognize that which is holy, right? That which is pure and that which is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Uh, like if we were to go and read uh, something that's like, oh, like stealing is good, you know, mur- like you know, murder is that what you should do. Uh, you would know that that's evil, right? You would know that that is against God. So, being that we do know that which is righteous and holy, and that has been uh, directly revealed to you by God. Uh, when you go and you read the scriptures, you recognize. Like, you know, given that we are a sheep, we recognize the voice of our Lord. So we don't go there alone, essentially. Right? We are not going to the Bible alone. And there's also a cohesiveness uh, amongst the scriptures, right? Like you have the Old Testament where God is promising to re- reveal a Mashiach, Messiah. And then you have the New Testament where God is keeping his promise. Right? 
And uh, not to mention that the apostles reference other books in the Bible, um, as well as, you know, biblical prophecies like Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, uh, Isaiah 9, 6 are fulfilled uh, in the coming of Jesus, the Mashiach. And, you know, these are historical figures. Like these are real people. Like King David is a real person, Moses, uh, Jesus, uh, Paul, you know, Pontius Pilate. These are all real people. You know, they all existed, you know, live their lives. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's something good to know. But um, yeah, so I guess, uh, let's see. Yeah, go ahead, uh, scientists, you're gonna say something? Oh, no, you could continue if you're gonna say something. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I guess you can uh, ask for some. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, what what are, what are your uh do you, do you what are your favorite types of uh, Christian apologetics, um for say for example uh, like a evidentialist versus a presuppositionist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, I, I tend to support the transcendental argument for God, um, also known as presuppositional apologetics. Um, and so essentially what, what that is, it speaks about how um, God is the necessary precondition for human intelligibility. Um, it speaks about ontology, right? Ontology is what it is, it's the true nature of being. And essentially there is a certain uh, property set to ontology that is necessary uh, in order for you to be able to know anything or in order for me to be able to know anything as well. Um, so there are like massive problems in the field of uh, secular philosophy in that they all tend to be fallibilists, like they hold to a fallibilist view of knowledge. And so fallibilism essentially says that knowledge is uncertain, right? Knowledge is, is uh, like, we, we couldn't really be certain about knowing anything. And so this applies to the empiricists, the rationalists, the pragmatists. Um, you know, they, they just kind of content themselves with these self-contained, self-consistent, uh, like, theories of knowledge, these models. They're like, oh, I made a, I made a model in my brain, and it's self-consistent, and it makes me feel good. But, and they try to say that they can reason, no God needed, but it's not true. Right, like they're just trying to construct a model, and in which they can feel safe inside and say, okay, well, inside here I have a autonomous reasoning. Like I don't need God. Right, so that's that's the project of the secular philosophers. Right, to try to to build their own uh, psychological uh, philosophical fortresses uh, by which to deny the Christian God. But uh, they all they all don't work. Right, they all fail. <laughs> So, so you like read Greg Bonson and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I, I like Greg Bonson, uh, Van Til. Um, there's Bosserman. Like Bosserman wrote a book on the Trinity. So, you know, all, all of those things are pretty solid, right? pretty good. I believe there's also Lane Tipton, right? Lane Tipton, he has videos on YouTube. That's pretty cool. Uh, Joshua Pillows. Uh, Jason Lyle. Oh, yeah, Jason Lyle's really good. Although he's not, uh, he goes more about um, like science. Like he's a Christian scientist. Does like a great job though. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like uh, It seems a uh, null hypothesis. Hypothesis has a question. Uh huh. Yeah, null hypothesis. Um, yeah, uh, I have a question about uh, God's omniscience. Um. So we're we're told that that God knows everything, uh, and my my first question. This is going to kind of be a series of questions. My first question is: uh, Does that mean that God knows uh, even what we would do in hypothetical situations that are not real? For example, like if I'm a white male, if I had been born in in Nazi Germany in in the 1930s, God knows if I would have turned out to be a Nazi. For example, does does God know that kind of stuff? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so would you agree then that God actually has the knowledge of all possible worlds, uh, not just this one? Um, 
Sure, like, I would agree, but, like, I don't know. I tend not to think about possible worlds. I just kind of see, like, okay, well, what, what has God done? Because, like, like, God doesn't need to operate on possible worlds. Like, he knows the end from the beginning. Uh, he sovereignly ordained things. He he restrains the evil of man, right? Like, he has his um, hand on man's heart and restrains their evil restrains their wickedness and he works all things together for glory like uh like when judas right judas went and betrayed christ for 30 pieces of silver uh judas in his own will was wickedly uh betraying christ um maybe he was trying to establish like uh an earthly super kingdom like trying to force jesus and be like hey jesus show your power you know conquer the romans you know go go make this super kingdom um, but so in his own will, Judas was betraying Christ, but this was foreordained and sovereignly permitted by God as Jesus laid down his life, shed his blood on the cross for his sheep and bore our sins. And he was dead for three days and three nights and he rose from the grave, he rose from the grave and, you know, paid, paid for our sins and he conquered death. So before the foundation of the world, right, God knew that Adam was going to uh, eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and evil. Like he knew he was going to uh, rebel against him right, and fall. And uh, sorry, God, uh, knew, if, if, yeah, God uh, knew that he was going to. I want to try to. I want to try to keep us on track so, here. Yeah, one, uh, one second. I'll, I'll just finish this really, really quick. Um, so God knew that he was going to uh, to pay, right? To pay for the sins of Adam, right? To pay for the sins of Eve, uh, to pay for the sins of his sheep. And he showed this from the beginning, right? So in the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, they felt ashamed um, and they went and they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. Right, but okay. The, I, the fig I, leaves, I, right? I, the, I, the fig I, leaves, wait, wait, one second, one second. One second. I know, I know the Adam and Eve story. It's a, it's a Q. It's a Q and A, right? Q and A. It's not a. It's not um. Interrupt whenever. Right? It's Q well, and A. Ask a question I, and then I have answer. So you don't hey, have to go. Wanna, the story. All right. One, one second. Let's not. Let's not cut. Let's not go like interrupting people a lot. Um. So, because uh, it's important, right? This is important. Um. So yeah, like the fig leaves, right? So the fig leaves was the result of man's right it's the, it's the result of man's effort it's like okay you know i i, I do bad things or things like that but i'm gonna try to cover it okay, right? okay I'm gonna try to cover it with like I have to I'm gonna my cover question it. is not about um, well I'd, uh, I'd rather I'd, I'd rather finish my answer right if, if you interrupt i can preach? just move on yeah if you interrupt i can just preach? move on to someone else like i, I have yeah. a follow-up question yeah, i yeah, don't need you, to yeah, could, could you uh hey, could you boot this person wow you just want to preach all right, I don't want to cool. be in trouble. Yeah, just just mute him uh, for the rest of the uh, yeah, for the rest of the conversation. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'll I'll just go ahead and I'll so finish. I have a no, follow-up question. Go ahead and wait one second. Can mute I this ask guy. my follow-up question? Can you mute, mute this guy. Can you mute this guy? Can you mute him? Yeah, keep him muted. Don't mute him. Um. Okay. So we're talking about the. Um, the leaves, right? So, uh, yeah, so the, the leaves was the covering of man's effort, right? And it wasn't good enough. And this is like when you or I do like religious practices, like maybe if we grab the rosary beads and we say, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, you know, full of grace. Um, or or if we go to the Kaaba, right, and we're bowing to the big black stone um, or, you know, like, trying to venerate wooden paintings or oh, iconography and all that stuff, right? Or trying to do a bunch of good deeds. You know, these, these are fig leaves, right? These are man's effort at covering their own wretchedness, their own sin, and they are not good enough, right? They're not good enough. But God, right? God provides the sacrifice, right? So God, he went and he sacrificed an animal, right? He sacrificed an animal and he provided clothing right the right the right covering for adam and eve right god provides the covering and this points to how jesus right jesus is the sacrifice who shed his blood 
right on the cross. He is the Passover lamb, the true Passover lamb, the true high priest. And he shed his blood on the cross. And um, he, he provides the wedding clothes, right? The wedding clothes for the wedding of the lamb. And that is purchased uh, with his blood. So from the beginning, God has been pointing, right? God has been showing that he is the one who's going to take away our sins, right? From the beginning, you know, God has been showing that he, that he, he was going to pay for the sins of Adam, pay for the sins of Eve, right? Pay for the sins of all these people. So, so nothing was a surprise, right? God didn't go and see Adam and Eve uh, rebel and be like, like, oh shoot, I didn't see that coming. Um, God, God didn't like not see like you were going to do bad things or I wasn't going to, I was going to do bad things, right? Like God, God knows everything, right? He knows everything. And he, he knew that he was going to save his sheep. He knew he was going to shed his blood on the cross and save them. And ultimately everything was being done for his glory, right? For his glory. Hey, the penguin man has a question. It looks like. It's ultimately glorified. Uh, sure. Yo, what's up? Oh, wait, can you boot this guy? I don't want to talk to Lulz. Wait, what did, what did I do? I haven't, I haven't even said yeah, anything. I mean, it, he just popped up here. He seems to be engaged no, in good faith. I no, should I give him a, a shot. Yeah, I haven't that done that. The have thing a, to do would be to be I have, a, I, have, I have a history. I have a history with, with Lulz. Like, we've, we've spoken a lot. And he, so, he said, our he said, father of presuppositional apologetics, Greg yeah. Bronson, well, look, was very clear just, that we must yeah. engage our interlocutors with compassion yeah, yeah, yeah. because they already yeah. know the truth. Well, look, so I just. Uh, I say maybe. you take a check mark from Greg Bonson's playbook and look, engage can I just ask with compassion. Question? No, I've 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 dealt with uh, like he, he said wanna, some really very blasphemous things, you know, against. I just want to. So I just want to ask anything. Not he just asked to ask a question. Nobody else is yeah. asking any questions. Give him a shot, I say. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not interested so in engaging. Question... Uh, I'm not interested in engaging well, with one. All right, balls. I'm sorry. The question. Man. Look, can yeah, I just ask the question, please. and then no, if you, he wants you, to you answer, can, it, you can. No, you can. You can move down. This is his event. He yeah. asked me to mute you, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, just yeah, boot him. All right. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm perfectly fine with uh, moving on, and you know, you can go ahead and boot him and move him out of here. I just um, feel like that's not following our father of presuppositional apologetics greg bonson no, and what have. he would have said in that situation right no you gotta you gotta have standards and um yeah you I gotta mean, i'm standards. a presuppositional apologist myself and i'm very aware that greg bonson said to engage with compassion and i don't think you're doing a good job of engaging people with compassion you're just right out muting people rather than engaging with their points I don't think you're a good representative of Greg Bonson or Van Til with the way that you're talking to people. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, it is what it is. So, um, yeah. So here, here are some thoughts, right? So here are some thoughts. Um, that doggy is woofing. Oh yeah, I also wanted to say hello to Stinky. Hey, hey, hello. Caleb. Great to see you. Yes. Do you have uh, any like? words of wisdom or encouragement for people, you know, about uh, God. Christianity. Talk to him, block me. <laughs> Maybe later. I can't do it right now. That's all I had to say. All right. Nice. Um, but yeah. So with regards to that, right? So it's important, right? It is of critical importance that we all uh, you know, repent and accept that Jesus Christ shed our, shed His blood on the cross for our sins uh, in full. Um, you know, it is of critical importance that we put God first, that we love Him, that we do all things for His glory. Uh, relationships only make sense in context of the divine relationship, in context of our relationship with God. With, uh, without without God, <laughs> without God. Right, without God as our um, as our head, right? Without God as our head, without putting God first, um, 
we we are just slaves, right? We're slaves to things in this world. And so being a slave to like people's like, okay, I'm valuable because I'm with this girl, I'm valuable because I'm with this guy, I'm valuable because of my wealth or political power or how many subscribers I have. All those sorts of things are ultimately unfulfilling. These are gifts, and we're not to worship the gifts that God has given us, but we're to worship the gift giver. We're to worship God himself. If you were to go and have a child, and you were to give them a bunch of gifts, like let's say you bought them like toy cars or piano or guitar and video games, and they became obsessed with their gifts and just didn't want to talk to you or spend time with you or do anything with you, right? you, you would feel pretty sad about that. Right? You'd be like, hey, you know, my, my wonderful child, my, my beautiful child, you know, I want you to spend time with me. I want you to talk with me. I want, uh, I want you to have a relationship with me. And God also wants you to have a relationship with him. Right? God, he doesn't want you or me to be obsessed with the gifts or obsessed with the things of this world. Right? He wants us to love him, to uh, treasure him, and to do all things. For his glory. Okay. So, yeah, pretty important. All right. So, yeah. Let's see. One sec. So, I guess, um, let's see who's up here. All right. So, I guess, uh, Yammers, do you have a question? Um, or Sure. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the rosary. Uh, I just want to know, like, what's the problem with praying the rosary? Because we're reflecting on the life of Jesus, you know, like his um, yeah, um, glorious mysteries, sorrowful mysteries. Each mystery, depending on the day of the week, we're reflecting and meditating on his life and his miracles and like also what he went through. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's a good a good question mm -hmm. so uh yeah so in matthew um six seven and i guess we can get to that as well but so when when we're praying to god like we are speaking with him like we are communicating with him and we are communicating with a god who hears us a god who loves us a God who knows our thoughts even before we think them. And the, the Bible, it says that even sometimes when we don't know the words to say, God helps us, the Holy Spirit helps us with groanings that are too deep, right? Groanings that are too deep for words, right? The Holy Spirit will help us. So even when we don't know um, the words to pray and, you know, when, when we pray, you know, it's good for us to thank God, you know, thank you, God, for my family friends you know thank you god for paying for my sins you know thank you god for being good for hope for being holy and righteous and pure right having gratitude to god it's a wonderful beautiful essential and excellent thing right that's something that you should do and i should do so when we're praying to god we are talking to him we're communicating him we're sharing with him what is uh, on our heart on our mind in our soul right and it it should not be the form of a a repetition in which um it's it's like um it's it's more like a chant you know it shouldn't be like this chant now am i saying like okay we should never repeat ourselves in our prayers no i'm not saying like okay you should, we should just never repeat ourselves but the entirety of our or or a good portion of our prayer life um should not be uh like just repetition. So in Matthew 6, 7, um, in Matthew 6, 7, it says, and when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose they'll be heard for their many words, or they say, do not use like vain repetitions as the heathen or the pagans do. I guess that's a more literal, like do not use vain repetitions like the pagans do, for they think that they, and they will be heard for their many words, right? So, you know, when one is praying the rosary, 
or you go, Hail Mary, full of grace, right? The first beat, you know, next beat, Hail Mary, full of grace, right? Next beat, Hail Mary, full of grace, right? And, and you keep repeating these sorts of chants as you go through the beats. And then the last few beats are to God. So um, there's a couple of things. So one is um, I find it objectionable to see that many of these beads are, de are dedicated to Mary and only a few beads are dedicated to God. So um, if we're gonna do something, everything should be dedicated to God, right? It should all be for the glory of God and not for the glory of another. Um, so that, I mean, that's objectionable. And then the other thing is that it is directly going against Matthew 6, 9, right? So Matthew 6, 9, it says, when we pray, do not use vain repetitions. Right? We shouldn't just be you know, repeating ourselves over and over and over, right? So there, that's not, um, it's not a good thing. And we should be praying to God with genuineness, with earnestness, with what is on our heart and our mind. And, you know, just telling him, like, you know, thank you, God, and what's really on our heart. Maybe we need help with stuff. Because God hears us, God loves us, and God wants good things for us. Uh, but yeah, so do you have a follow-up to that, uh, Yammer's question, comment? Mm, I kind of, I, I, I've heard that argument before. Like, yeah, I don't like, you know, just like pray. Like, cause it's kind of like what the, what the Pharisees were doing, like out in the streets. They're just trying to like pray and repetition all day to get like, you know to show off like oh look at me you know i'm praying and praying and praying you know i don't know what their intentions were but i forget what the verse was but it was like don't i think it had to do with fasting actually it's like okay don't fast just because you're trying to like look weary and stuff and like then that's just your reward like you're just gonna get reward from like other men like oh look at me i'm fasting you know but like do it in secret you know so i can understand that argument but it's like, you know, Jesus loved his mother. Like, that's what he, when he was dying, he, had, he told John, like, behold your mother, behold thy mother. So it's like, you know, she's our mother too. So why can't we ask her for her to pray for us, you know? Um. Well, I mean, in the Bible, it says that we only have one high priest right? One intercessor, one mediator. Um, so who is that high priest? Who is that mediator? Uh, Poca Pocaccio? Or how do you say your username? Yammers? Yeah. So who who is our high priest? Who is our one mediator? Jesus. Yeah, amen. Um, is is there any other mediator, any other high priest? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think it's just Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen, absolutely. So we we should only go to the Father through the Son, who is Jesus, who is Christ, right? But doesn't God want us to pray with our brothers and sisters so the saints and mary they're also our brothers and sisters mary's our mother she's like the high saint and the other saints they're like our brothers and sisters in christ so god wants us to be in communion with them or just um, should we just be by ourselves and just like pray by ourselves no we we it's we should be in communion mm -hmm. uh yeah, like it's it's good for us to pray um, with our brothers and sisters, um, but we don't like pray t to our brothers and sisters. You know, like you don't pray to me. I don't pray to you. You know, we don't pray to uh, flawed, sinful, finite uh, creatures. You know, we, we pay, pray to God, right? God who is good, God who is holy, God is righteous, God who is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Why, why should we want to pray to anyone else, you know? We're not praying to them. We're praying, we're asking them to pray for us. And we're praying with them to Jesus because the saints are up in heaven with Jesus, Mary, with God, all in heaven. And so, you know, it they they're helping us. 
Okay, so we're we're praying to them. So can can we also pray to God in in the name of Jesus? Yes, and Catholics do do that. Okay, and um, is Jesus lacking in anything? Like when we pray to God or we pray to pray to Christ, like is he lacking in any way? No, he's not. But like when you go to church and you're, you know, asking people, oh, by the way, uh, please pray for you know, um, pray for me about this or that, you know, to your, you know, your brothers and sisters and at the church. Just because you're asking them, oh, can you pray for me? Uh, I really need prayer in this or something or like have a prayer request. That doesn't mean like, oh, you know, Jesus isn't enough and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, so would you would you say that it's blasphemous to call Mary a co-mediatrix? I don't know what that is. Like a a co-mediator. co-mediator i don't know what that is um so so yeah so essentially like jesus he he is our only mediator like our only intercessor and so the the picture of a mediator that's provided in the bible is one of the old testament right so there is the temple right god commanded the temple there's the outer court the veil and the inner court so there would be a human high priest so let's say you and me would be in the outer court and then a human high priest would go through the veil uh, into the inner court uh, with blood, and then he would intercede, right? He would plead for the sins of of the people um, and for the sins of himself, right? So he is uh, he is pleading our case, right? Pleading our case before God. So the high priest would be the mediator, like he would be the one who is pleading your case and pleading my case. Um, and so in in Christianity, this this representation that god gave is an earthly representation of a heavenly reality um so the outer court is earth the high priest is jesus uh the veil is death because jesus died on the cross three days and three nights and then he rose from the grave and then the inner court is the holies of holies right so jesus um he went into the holies of holies and he intercedes for your sins and my sins with his blood so he he is the high priest he is the mediator he's the one who's pleading your case before god mm-hmm. yeah i believe that yeah so so is there any other um individual who's pleading your case before god I mean, I guess, I mean, how am I supposed to know? Well, like there isn't, it's just Jesus. Like Jesus is the only one who's pleading like your case or my case before God with his blood. And okay, but are you talking about like in heaven? Yeah, yeah, like in heaven and throne, in the throne room of God, like in the holies of holies. Mm And you, uh, what, okay, I, I mean, I, I believe that, yes, but, I mean, aren't there more people, I mean, isn't, I mean, heaven also has Mary and the saints, right? Um, yeah, like, they're, they're in heaven. Um, yeah, I believe they're in heaven. But, um, you know, that's, that's like on Judgment Day, right? Like, on Judgment Day, um, yeah. Everyone's going to be judged, and we're going to be judged, uh, you know, based on our uh, good deeds only, because Jesus paid for all the bad stuff with His blood right on the cross. And you know, if we don't accept that Jesus paid for our sins in full, then we'll be judged. Uh, then people will be judged on good and bad deeds, and uh, what people deserve for breaking the law of God is death and hellfire. Right, well, and so. Yeah, yeah. You need to accept by faith, like by faith, that Christ has paid for everything, past, present, and future. Okay, let's yeah, see. Yeah, after Christian, um, you said we're not judged based on good or bad deeds. 
uh, if, if we accept that Jesus has shed his blood on the cross to pay for our sins, right, then, uh, yeah, it's paid for in full. Yeah, so um, the, you said that God doesn't judge us for good or bad deeds. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't judge us based on our bad deeds, right? He will only judge us based on our good deeds. The reason why he wouldn't judge us based on our bad deeds is because we're accepting that Jesus' blood pays for all of our sins, you know, past, present, and future. So all all of our sins would be paid for. Why does Romans? Why does Romans two verse eight say that those who are evil, self-seeking, and who reject the truth and follow evil, uh, there will be wrath and anger? Doesn't that, and, oh yeah, and verse 9 says that there will be trouble and distress for every human who being who does evil, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So why does it say that people will be judged based on uh, bad deeds? Oh yeah, one, one second, yeah, go ahead. What, what did you say? Um, so Romans 2, verse 8 to 9 seems to indicate that we will be judged that those who do evil will be judged according to the evil they do, according to the bad deeds they commit. Okay. It says, but for those who are factious and do not obey the truth, but obey wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be tribulation and distress for every human who does evil, the Jew first and also the Greek. Uh, and we can go and pull up. So Romans 2. <laughs> We're posting up more stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. And we, we can start from here as well. So it says, uh, Romans 2. It says, therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. Whoever you are to judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who practice such things. And who do you think this, O man? You who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God. Or do you despise the riches of his glory? Right? Do you, do you, do you, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? So it's God's goodness that leads us to repentance. But according to the hardness of your impenitent, right, impenitent heart, uh, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the days of wrath revelation of the justice righteous judgment of god will render to each according to his deeds eternal life to those by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory honor and immortality but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the jew first and also of the greek the glory honor and peace to everyone that works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For as many have sinned without the law, the law shall perish without the law. And as many who have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Okay. So if someone has like a, a genuine faith, right, they will do that which is good, right? They will do that which is holy, right? That which is pure. Yeah. But if someone has dead faith, uh, then they will not, uh, you know, live, do, do righteous actions. However, it is not uh, works that pay for your sins, right? Or pay for my sins, uh, but it's only the blood of Christ, right? So when we accept that Jesus has shed his blood on the cross for our sins, then though our sins are as scarlet, they are as white as snow. So, so yeah, I would, I would view this as uh, talking more about like sanctification, right? So good works that we do uh, to honor our heavenly Father, not like good works to pay for our sins. Yeah. Yeah. Can I address that? So number one, no one believes that our works pay for our sins, right? <clears throat> we only believe that works can merit anything through faith, through charity, through love. We don't believe that. Uh, we don't believe that you can earn your salvation through works. So, I mean, that's just a complete straw man. Um, but secondly, it's not talking about um, having a dead faith. That's n nowhere in the text. So where, where do you get the idea that it's simply talking about um, having a living faith and your works being like the fruit of your faith or something like that? Like, where does it say that? Verse 5. Just 
Yeah, I guess you could put that as well. Verse five. Okay. Yeah, it's how, talking how about who he's addressing. Okay, so your argument is that he's addressing the Jews? No, he's stressing. It says he's addressing those with um, but in accordance with the hardness and your, but in accordance with your hardness and your impotent, impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So it's talking about those who are unrepentant. Right, I, I agree. But yeah, you're right. But it still, right, but it still shows that. Those who those don't who repent, do, do they, they, they will feel God's wrath. Will... Right, but that still, it's the verse still proves that it's good works that are involved in your justification. Yes, I agree that you can't, it's, it's those who are going to, those who are referred to in verse 9, uh, or sorry, verses 8 to 9, are those who are unrepentant. I don't deny that. Okay. Oh yeah, of course. Those who claim to have faith but don't repent, their faith is dead. But, but wait a second, you're adding that to the text. It's not talking. Okay, about those okay. Who those who don't repent are will feel God's wrath. Right, we agree, but that doesn't address my point. Yeah, I mean, I, I would take the Bible as a whole, right? You know, the the entirety of the Bible. Um, you know, if you go into Leviticus, it says that the the ransom for our souls is is blood. Like blood is that which uh, ransoms and redeems our souls. Um, yeah, so Leviticus seventeen verse eleven. Yeah, Leviticus. Yeah, Leviticus, uh, yeah, Leviticus seventeen eleven. What's that? Yeah, but that doesn't contradict what I'm saying. Or... I'm not saying yep. that good work atone for your sins. That's not what I'm claiming at all. That's not the Catholic position. Also, what's up, Yard? Yo. Nice. But um, but yeah. So I guess uh, you know, I guess I'll finish addressing uh, what you call it, I guess Yemmer's questions, and then we'll go and keep going all around and stuff. Okay, I have a lot of other questions too, so I hope you can get to that. But... Sure. And then also, you know, if anyone in the audience wants to come on my, up and ask questions, you know, feel free. Uh, that's fine. Alrighty. So let's see justification. All right. Justification. So yeah. So I guess um, yeah, Mars, How how would you view? Because like I guess we were kind of talking about this earlier. Um. How would you view? Uh. Like the authority, like the Bible. Would you see that the Bible and God? you know, is our ultimate authority. Yes, and Catholics uh, believe that too. They, but they also believe like, okay, the scriptures, the, the holy scriptures, they're not just going to be like, okay, and you, you know, when Jesus was walking the earth, he wasn't handing out Bibles to people. He was doing oral traditions and teachings. And so we have those two. And we have the magisterium, the authority to make sure the interpretations of the teachings are remaining the same throughout the ages. It's not like, oh, anyone can just have their own personal interpretation and pick and choose their own rules. We have to respect the authority of the church because that's what Jesus wanted us to. Um, he left us the church. So, so would, would like the, um, I guess like the catechisms and Vatican one, uh, would that be like beneath? the bible like beneath the word of god like far far below uh the catechism you said yeah yeah catechism vatican one below the bible what do you mean um like god's voice and god is number one like the top dog like above everything like would you agree yes catholics believe this okay they believe in the father the son the holy spirit they believe in the trinity mm -hmm. and so then... and they respect the apostles 
who Jesus left the church with. And so that, that's why there's a complete chain. That's why the church is apost apostolic. And it's one, it's holy, it's Catholic, it's universal, apostolic. So it comes from the apostles. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like apostolic. Um, but yeah, so, you know, God and his voice is that which is most authoritative. No other document, like not like the Book of Mormon, not uh, Vatican I, Vatican II, uh, catechisms, uh, you know, not any like any anything else um is as as authority uh, is as authoritative as god's word right god's word is divine right it's holy you know worthy of all glory honor and praise it is authoritative um so like the the catechisms they they go underneath right they they are judged by the word of god they do not judge the word of god they do not um you know like provide this sort of interpretation that everyone must follow um yeah i mean would you would you kind of agree with that that god's word is that which judges all other writings like it's that which is authoritative yes and yes and you know jesus when he walked the earth he he know of course mm -hmm. Amen. Well, that's that's definitely good. And that's excellent. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's good. You know, it's all the scripture, the Bible and God is our ultimate authority, nothing else. Uh, so yeah, you know, that's that's a good thing. That's not and good. you know, in, in Christianity, right? So in Christianity, we can know, right? We can know that we are saved, right? We can have uh, confidence, right? We can have certainty. Um, and so the way that like you and I can have certainty is by having confidence in God, right? Having confidence in Christ, right? That, that Jesus, you know, Jesus shed his blood on the cross and he paid for all of our sins, you know, past, present, and future. You know, he, he, he pays for everything and we accept that sacrifice, um, you know, by faith. And so when we, when we accept that sacrifice by faith and though our sins are scarlet, um, you know, they, they are as white as snow. So when, yeah, so in Galatians 2.16, right, it says you're not justified by works of the law. Right? So what, what is works of the law? Well, works of the law is like the Ten Commandments, you know, put God first, don't murder, uh, don't steal, uh, don't commit um, adultery, um, you know, thou, don't, don't covet. If, if you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. So we're not justified by works of the law because you, you haven't kept the law perfectly and I haven't kept the law perfectly. We've all done bad things. And for doing bad things, what we deserve is death and hellfire, right? I'm, I have done bad things. I am a sinner. I need a savior. And that savior is Jesus, right? We're saved by grace. At Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you're saved. It is not of yourselves, not by what you do, not by what I do. Not by uh, grabbing the rosary beads and saying, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, but by, oh, the, grace boy. Of, by, by the gift, right? Feed to it. For by grace you're saved, it is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, right? It's a gift. Um, so. Yeah, I think Catholics, you know, they, they understand, like, you know, the faith and the, the grace of God and being saved like yes that's what brings you into the circle of god's family but while you're in the circle of god's family there's sanctification that you that you, we go through oh. in order to grow closer to jesus and like say if we sinned or something like we want we want to you know reconcile that we want to heal from that and we want to um ask god for forgiveness uh, through confession, because we have to confess our sins, uh, repent, ask for forgiveness, um, do penance, you know, and like have like have a true in our heart. Like we have to really feel it in our heart. It's not like, oh, I'm going to just do this because I have to. No, you have to really feel it in your heart and yeah. ask because um, the priest basically, you know, in the box, the confession booth, you know, the priest is 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 um 
we're not asking the priest for forgiveness. We're asking God for forgiveness. That's what people, that's what the Protestants don't understand. They think, oh, you have to go into a box with a priest and ask for, no, we're not asking the priest. We're asking God and Jesus for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. All right. So would you um, affirm that grace is unmerited favor, that grace is a gift? That grace is the blood of Christ, right? Which is a gift from God. Grace is unmerited favor. Would would you, would you affirm that? Would you, would you? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Right. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So grace is a gift, right? Grace yeah. is unmerited. Right. That's favor. what I'm saying. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, it's, uh, um, but yeah, if you have a question, just post it in the text chat and then um, maybe I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take the next guest after. So, um, and I'm not trying to act oh like I know everything God. about Catholicism goodness, or goodness. the church. Yeah. I guess, um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess let's, let's not, Call out Kenyon, like one one at a time. Oh, my bad, um, my bad. Yeah, no problem. Apologies. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so okay. Love the feedback. Yeah, could you uh mute Kenyon or kick him? All right. Yeah. Hello, hello, boys. All right. Yeah, hello, hello. But yeah, one one second. So right now it's just like one at a time. Uh, I'm responding to Yammer's questioning, and uh, I would request that um, yeah, if people want to come up, just like I don't know, like post in chat or something or DM. I don't want to have, have a bunch of people shouting over each other. Uh, I want it to be like a civil dialogue, civil chase. All right. So what were we talking about? We're talking about perseverance of the saints, or what, what was the last thing you were talking about? Grace. Yeah, we talked about grace. All right, so grace is unmerited favor, right? It's that which you don't deserve and that which I don't deserve. Grace is a gift. It's a gift from God. Um, so when when God um, shed his blood, right? He is the Passover lamb. He shed his blood on the cross, right? That That is a gift. That is God's work, right? It's not your work. It's not my work. It's not teamwork, right? You know, you, you didn't provide the Passover lamb. I didn't provide the Passover lamb. Uh, we didn't together work together with God and say, hey, God, we're cooperating. You plus me provide the Passover lamb. It's God's work. God provide the Passover lamb. Right. So do you agree with that, uh, Yemmer? Yes. Um, Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. No, absolutely. Very, very true. So, yeah, like God. God is the one, right? Jesus is the one who, you know, provides the Passover lamb, right? It's God's work, not your work. Um, it's not teamwork. You know, God, God provides, right? God provides the Passover lamb. So, um, so when God pays for something, when God pays for with his blood, um, he, he pays for everything. Like it's a complete and total payment, completely and utterly sufficient you know jesus on the cross he said it is finished um yeah so, i don't mean to interrupt but I, you, I just posted a poll you, in the chat yeah yeah could you uh drop this guy um so canyon get um, him out of here yeah canyon my bad she's posting about risk um so, so yeah, and I agree. Um, uh, I agree, like, because that every week during Mass, um, we celebrate God's sacrifice through the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. Yes, the, the Eucharist. Um, but yeah, so with regards to grace, right, it is God's work. God's the one who shed the blood, his blood on the cross. He pays for everything that's a gift, which we accept um, by faith. So God pays for everything with his blood on the cross. You know, Jesus died on the cross. Uh, it is it is finished. Um, so it is it is finished. Uh, it's a payment. So would, would you agree that the blood of Christ pays for your sins in full, uh, lacking 
lacking in nothing, you know, past, present, and future. Like, would you would you agree with that? Sorry about the background noise, but the wolfing dog. Yes, I agree. Um, because without Jesus, we'd still still be under the sins of Adam. Yeah. So Jesus pays for everything with his blood on the cross. He pays completely and totally and fully. So um, the blood of Christ pays for justice, right? Pays for, you know, justice cries out for your blood and my blood. The wages of sin is death. But instead of your blood for your sins or my blood for my sins, it's Jesus's blood. Jesus shed his blood, which we accept by faith. So now the debt is zero dollars. The debt is nothing paid in full. Um, so given that you accept that Jesus has shed his blood on the cross for your sins, do you have any debt? Is, is there any sort of sins or wickedness that you are carrying upon yourself? Or, or, or did God take all of your sins and place it on the back of Christ? Like, is there a debt that you're carrying, like a sins that you're carrying, or did God take it and put it on the back of Christ, put everything on the back of Christ? Mm, I would say right now there's no mortal sins I'm carrying. Um, you know, I'm not I, I'm not in mortal sin right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the whole the whole like mortal and venial sin, um, you know, it's it's not really like biblical. Or it's not like a biblical thing. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's not a biblical thing. There's some sin but, that leads to death. But, yeah, all, all sin leads to death. But, yeah, but all sin leads to death. But yeah, so pretty much. Um, Wait, that's but that's you just well, contradict you're contradicting with Christian five seventeen. So we need nine venial sin. Well, one, one, one second. Let's, let's go kind of let's go one at a time. Let's go one at a time. So right now I'm speaking with Yemers, and then afterwards I'll be glad to you know debate with Squiddy and you know so on and such forth. Yeah, um, and, and I, I'm listening. I'm listening to a response, but um, I don't mind if Squiddy takes over. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I guess I guess first I'll just kind of finish my, my line of questioning, and then afterwards I'll, you know, speak with Squiddy. Um. So. Yeah. So basically, with regards to, um, yeah, like this whole this whole sin thing. All right. So essentially, in Roman Catholicism, like what what they try to teach is they try to excuse me uh, yeah could you, could you uh can you drop can you can you drop this guy i didn't think i was i thought i thought i was muted because someone muted me kenyan's a troll <laughs> um but uh but yeah so oh yeah where, where were we at okay so the state of grace um so in roman catholicism what they teach is they teach that you and me are like whiteboards, right? So we go through life, we sin, you know, our board gets dirty, and then we go to the Roman Catholic Church, and then we do the sacraments, you know, the confess to the priest in the box or do the Hail Marys. And okay, now you're clean. Your board has been clean. Okay, now you go about, back out into the world, you do more bad things, and now you're dirty, and back and forth and back and forth, right? But this is not biblical, right? This is not Christian. Um, Jesus, he shed his blood on the cross. He paid for everything with his blood on the cross completely and totally past, present, and future. We are either under grace, under the blood of Christ, or we're under the law, right? And Galatians 2.16 says, we are not justified by work of the law. I see. So if you're under the law, you need to be perfect. Always put God first. Um, like never murder or steal or um, ne never look at someone you're not married to with lust and, you know, it's, we've all done bad things. So justification through the law, that door is completely closed and the door is, um, completely shut. So the only justification at the, well, we're not justified through the law. We're only justified by faith, faith in who is it faith in yourself? You are know, like, oh, well. You know, I didn't do any mortal sins today, or you know, I didn't do too many sins, or um, oh, I remembered to go to to the priest and I confessed to him, or uh, oh yeah, I, I took the rosary and I said like fifty oh, yeah, hail mary. The problem, the problem with that you know, is the problem with so, that is scripture so, teaches so us. One, one, one second. Can you, can you can you 
like mute the guy. Like don't don't just like call out while I'm in the middle of talking. Bro, can you let somebody speak? Oh, yeah, for you, once, yeah, yeah, you drop a, you drop both of these people. Then can you let somebody and, speak for once and stop yapping no, all the you, time, bro? Like let somebody uh, speak for once, bro. Yeah, can you can you drop it in? Yeah, drop him down. Yeah, don't don't un- just yeah, keep him like that. Um but yeah, so we were speaking about um what were we talking about? We're talking about trying to remember uh the state of grace, right? So essentially uh Roman Catholicism teaches like there is this state of grace. Right? If you're in the state of grace, well then, you know, likely you're going to be saved. But you go out, you do bad things, you look at a woman lost or you um uh rob a store or something, like, okay, well I fell out of the state of grace. And if I die, well, you know, maybe I'm probably gonna be burning in the hellfire, right? Um so uh yeah, like if you ask a Roman Catholic, you say, Hey, Hey, Roman Catholic, um, are you saved? Like, do you know that you're saved? You know that you're going to be with God um, in in the afterlife. You know, they're they're going to say no. Right? I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to be saved. I hope so. I hope so. But you know, like, I don't have certainty. Um, and this is very sad. Right? This is what comes from believing in a works-based gospel. Right? Like, if I believe that my salvation, my justification, was dependent upon me. Uh, participating in the sacraments, me confessing to the priest in the box, me grabbing the rosary beads and saying, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, right? If it's all you know, dependent on me in whole or in part or in any way, shape or form, you know, of course, I'm not going to have confidence that I'm saved. In fact, I'll be very, very unconfident and uh, probably just believing I'm on my way to hell, right? Even if I was the best Roman Catholic, even if I was the most observant Roman Catholic, even if I did everything, you know, even if I like I lived in that confession booth. I mean, we can we can look at Martin Luther, right? Martin Luther, um, you know, b- before he you know before he came to Christ, but Martin Luther was a a very um, serious uh, Roman Catholic. And he was a very serious Roman Catholic, and he spent hours, right? He spent hours in the confession proof to the priest, you know, oh, priest, I did this, and priest, I did that, and priest, I did this, and, you know, God, forgive me, you know, hours a day agonizing over his sins, right, you know, crying out to God, God, forgive me, right, and so he he had an inkling, like a small understanding of the nature and the gravity of his sins, the wretchedness of his sins, this evilness and this wickedness, he had this small inkling, and that small inkling propelled him to, to confess to the priest and cry out to him and cry out to God for mercy. Uh, but, you know, we don't really see that amongst uh, you know, Roman Catholics or people in general. But, um, but yeah, so, and another thing well, that... Well, actually, can you know, I add something to what you just said? Uh, sure. Well, actually, can I add something to what you My priest said that if it's not a mortal sin, like if it's like, um, if it's like a different type of sin, like not so like severe you can just get some holy water make the sign of the cross and ask god yourself for forgiveness you don't have to go to confession yeah mm-hmm. well i mean that's still that's all that's also still dependent upon the self right you know make the sign of the cross you know grab holy water um you know that's that's dependent upon what you're doing or dependent upon what i'm doing and if you go through the writings, right, there's different writings in the Roman Catholic Church. Um, they have even more stringent uh, requirements. Um, like, I, I believe it speaks about, like, purity of heart or, like, not even having any sort of bad intentions. Like, there's, yeah, there's writings that make it very, very stringent. Um, but, yeah, there's there's a ton of writings in the Roman Catholic Church. Um but yeah, I mean, the main thing, though, is that look look at the answer from the priest, right? The priest is like, um, holy water, sign of the cross. But that's that's from you, right? That's from you doing it. You did the sign of the cross. You bought the holy water. Right? You, you went and you did these things. And had you not done these things, then you would still be in your sins, right? According to, like, the priest or according to Roman Catholicism. Well, if it is by grace... It is no longer of works, right? If it is a gift, it's not by the 
not making the sign of the cross. Right? It's not by you buying holy water, right? Um, it's not by you, right? If, if it is by grace, then it is by God, right? by God shedding his blood on the cross, you know, for your sins and my sins. It's a gift which you accept exactly. by faith, right? Would, would, you, would you do this sort of ad- action or would you have this sort of attitude to any, any other gift? Like, would, would there be any other gift or any other action in which you would do this sort of thing, Yammer? Like, let's say someone bought you a birthday gift um, for your birthday. You know, like they went and they bought you, um, you know, like a violin um, or they, they bought you like a piano. Like, would you be like, like, oh, like this is really good. But in order for me to accept your gift, um, I need to go out and buy something else. Like, I don't know. I need to go and buy some, some holy water. Um, and I need to, like, I don't know, do stuff, like do push-ups or something. Like, I, I got I to gotta do these, these extra things in order for this gift uh, to, be, to be received. Like, that, that sort of thing is attempting to... Um, and not not only do, is it like it's saying it's necessary, like you have to do this. It's not optional, right? If if we're saying like, oh, this is optional, then maybe you could have some sort of case, or someone could have some sort of case. But to say that it's necessary, like you have to do this, well, then you're not talking about grace. You're not talking about a gift. You're talking about works. Are you saying that you're doing something um, in order to ensure that, like your your sins are paid for? You got to make the sign of the cross. You got to pay money uh, to buy the holy water, right? So okay. this is, you know, this 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 is something that you know you you are doing. But um, well, I want to kind of finish my, my line of questioning and then well, he, cha- he just changed the name. Before it was Ask Christian versus Politics. Now he changed it to Ask Me Anything. To Ask Who? Uh, okay, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. No, no, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. Ask. Okay, sorry, yeah. sorry. The sub, sorry, real quick. For some reason, I don't know why I didn't read the, the Ask a Christian versus Politics, right, Taco? Yes, it says, yeah, Ask a Christian, Amy. That's what it says on top. Yeah, but in the same tag. Right. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess for now, I'll just yeah, but let, I, I think for now, I'll, kind of finish, I'll finish with uh, I'll no, finish my, my own questioning and then can I'll can I just ask Taco something real yeah. quick. Taco, if this is Ask a Christian yeah. versus Politics, doesn't it make sense for us to give responses, not just him ranting and him preaching? Yeah, it's pretty clear to me this about the uh, uh, I mean that, that that was that was a response, so you know we can, can continue. We, can and the thing is, 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 the the thing is, is that you know I've been on Roman Catholic stages, right, and they are very totalitarians, right? They don't, uh, they don't, they don't uh, play nice. Right? They don't play nice. Um, because you keep misrepresenting our position, I was trying to correct you, and you muted me. Uh, you worship a pope. Yeah, we should not. We should not do that. Uh, anyway, so uh, 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 the guy. No, that's not Canyon. Josh and Canyon are different people. Yeah, based in red pilled. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll kind of finish my chain of reason and everything. All right. So what we're we talking about. Grace, right? The state of grace, right? So, so, yeah. So in Roman Catholicism, right? You, we need to be in this state of grace, right? So if we're not in this state of grace, then we are in trouble. Right? We're probably going to go to hell if we die. So if you were a serious Roman Catholic, right? If, if anyone here was a serious Roman Catholic, um, you know, they would be living inside the confession booth, right? I know that I would live inside there. I'd, like, I'd bring my mat, right? I'd bring my sleeping bag, 
bring some food. And I tell the, Ro the, the Roman Catholic priest, I'm like, hey, you know, this place is my new home, right? I'm, I am a terrible sinner. I have a lot to tell you. I'm going to be here for a long, long, long time. Let's, let's call that the rest of my life. Right? I'm going to be right here confessing this, confessing that, confessing everything. I, I, I never want to leave this state of grace. I never want to jeopardize my eternal salvation. Right? I'm not going to come on Discord and talk to people. No, I'm going to be confessing to God. God, I'm a sinner. God, I'm a wretch. Deserve death and hellfire. Please save me. Please forgive me. So, yeah, I mean, I think there is uh, kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to see on that. But yeah, so with regards to that, um, uh, Rome, uh, what you call it? Martin Luther. Right? Martin Luther is a very serious, right? very serious Roman Catholic, you know, and he, he went and he was committing penance, right? He was on the staircase, climbing up the staircase on his knees, you know, God forgive me right? for his sins, right? He was, he was climbing up and, you know, just, just beating himself up, right? Beating himself over his sins. But, you know, God doesn't want that for you, right? God doesn't want that for, for me. God did not shed his blood on the cross so you could go and pay for everything. Right? God didn't shed his blood on the cross so you can live in condemnation and guilt and self-hatred. Right? God didn't shed his blood on the cross so you could, um, you know, hate yourself and just be in slavery, right? God shed his blood on the cross to free you from the condemnation in which we all already find ourselves under as law breakers, right? God shed his blood on the cross to pay for your sins with his blood and set you free, right? To set you free in Christ. As in Exodus, God sent Moses who was the deliverer and Moses delivered the Jews from physical slavery, right? Moses delivered the Jews from physical slavery. And God showed the Jews also how he was going to deliver them from spiritual slavery, right? God commanded the Jews to go get a male, unblemished lamb, right? The final plague was the angel of death. So why a male? Well, it's because Christ is a male. Why unblemished? Well, it's because Christ is sinless. Why a lamb? Because the first coming of Christ, he comes humbly, right? Not to go and crush the Roman Empire uh, beneath his heel, uh, but rather to... He came to accept, right? He came to uh, humbly, right? To pay for our sins, right? Pay for our sins with his blood on the cross. So they were to, to sacrifice this lamb and to take this blood of the lamb and put it on their doorposts. And if they're covered by the blood of the lamb, then the angel of death would pass over their house, right? It'll pass over their house um, instead of executing their firstborn. So God didn't look down from heaven, right? He, it was just like, are you covered by the blood of the lamb? Right? So if you're covered by the blood of the lamb and the lamb was the sacrifice that God provided, right? you didn't provide it, I didn't provide it. It's not your work, not my work, not teamwork. It's God's work. You know, if you're covered by the blood of the lamb, then the angel of death would pass over your house, right? Pass over your house instead of executing your firstborn. So God, he didn't look down upon the people and say, oh, look, these guys have mortal sins and these guys don't. Or he didn't look down and say, oh, well, look, you know, these guys, these guys, they attend, they attend mass or they attend synagogue. And these guys, uh, they don't attend synagogue. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, Holy shit, hurry up. That's fair. Uh, but yeah. Um, well, yeah so with, with regards to that, you know, God, you know, he, he did not um, look down upon the Jews and make it like a deciding sort of thing, you know, between them based upon their works. Like, okay, these guys bought holy water. These guys didn't buy holy water. Um, isn't it amazing that Martin Luther, right, he came to fight against indulgences, right? What are indulgences? Well, back in the day, you know, they would say uh, every time a coin rings out of, out of hell, a soul springs or out of like purgatory, you know, whatever their jingle was. 
but every time a coin rings out of purgatory a soul springs or out of hell a soul springs isn't that insane that the roman catholic church at one point was so depraved they thought that we could pay for our sins with filthy lucre with gold with silver with coins how how demonically depraved do you have to be to endorse that sort of thing um so we and now and now you see the advice of the priest like oh well you know i have a sin priest what do i do like, oh go buy holy water like go go uh, go pay for it with gold and with coins right indulgences have never gone away in full from the roman catholic church they've never repudiated it they never said oh that's evil that's wrong we do not pay for our sins with gold we do not pay for our sins with silver right there has never been an anathema by the roman catholic church on indulgences right it has not been repudiated it right which is very terrible it's very awful you know the the bible you know in hebrews 9 22 it says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness so the only currency right, that pays for your sins and my sins right, it's not bitcoin gold bars good deeds uh yen or repentance or getting sick um you know there are some hadiths in, in islam that speak about like you know hey if, if we get sick then some of our sins are expiated from us like no getting sick doesn't expiate any of your sins right gold doesn't pay for any of your sins good deeds, repentance, none of that pays for your sins. Going to Hajj does not pay for your sins. Seeing the Shahada doesn't pay for your sins. Um, you know, going going and using the rosary to say Hail Marys, it doesn't expiate your sins, right? It's only the blood of Christ, right? It's only the blood of the Passover lamb, right, of, of Jesus, right? So Jesus is the only one um, who, who pays for our sins. But yeah, I also want to welcome uh, Absolute Demon. You know, good to see you. I, I like him, and also good to see, you know, Bubbles and everybody. Great to see you guys. Um, and uh, you want to give closing you. remarks for your awesome event you just ran? Um, sure. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Holy shit! Finally, yeah, I guess I'll give some closing remarks. And uh, I'm glad I have my number one fan, Kenyon, who came up especially. You know, just to uh, it's say actually hello. especially give, not especially. Yeah, to go and give his. Uh, anyway, um, all right. So, uh, closing, I guess you know, closing remarks and stuff, and then also I'll just say, um, Yammer, did you have anything you wanted to say as well? Kind of just a comment on what was said. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for like explaining, it's it's good to listen. Um, to your point of views and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. So, um, yeah, so you know, kind of like closing remarks and things like that. So you have a lot of people, you know, on this server uh, who call themselves Christians. Right? You have a lot of people on this server who call themselves Christians. And what I invite everyone to do is to take every claim and test it against the Word of God. Right? We have no higher authority than God and the Bible, right? God and his voice, right? That is our highest authority. That is that which is good, that which is holy, that which is pure, that which is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Like This is not a joke and it's not a game, but this is of critical importance. Your relationship with God, eternal life, the redemption of our souls, the uh, ultimate relationship which gives context to all other relationships. Without putting God first, right? God who is good, God who is holy, God who is righteous and pure, worthy of all glory and honor and praise, we could not know how to love. Right? We could not know how to love. We could not know um, what is the good, what is the holy, what is the righteous, what is the pure. So, you know, it's not, you know, many, there are many, right? There are many who call themselves Christians on this server. but I advise you, I recommend you to take everything that they say and to hold it up against scripture, hold it up against the light of scripture, right? You hold it up against the light of scripture, right? Every claim 
Okay, say chapter and verse. Where does it say that in the in the Bible? And we have professional, right? Professional scripture twisters, professional people who will quote the Bible to profess false doctrines, profess doctrines of works, saying that like, hey, you you gotta like do stuff um in order to be saved. You know, you you have to like buy holy water, or you have to uh, do rosary, or um, you know, go and kiss icons and do these various uh, pagan practices, right? You, we have professionals, Christ, scripture, twi uh, scripture twisters, and you know, many of these guys are very intelligent, and you know, I, I I like them as people, but when it comes to standing against the word of God, standing against that which is good and that which is holy, right, that's just evil, right? It's just wretched, and any of us who do that need to repent. And we need to turn away um, from from that sort of thing. So those to to be a Christian, right? The essentials is sola scriptura, right? Sola scriptura is that the Bible and God is our ultimate authority. Not Let's you. Fly on the plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. So it's not you. It's not me. It's not the Pope or some you know random quote mind church father, right? It's the Bible is the voice of God. The church is the the obedient bride, right? She listens to the voice of her husband, and her husband is Christ. Her husband is Christ, and the Bible is his voice. And sola scriptura is that uh, by faith alone in Christ alone, that Christ pays for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Right? Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you're saved, it is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And Paul says, if anyone comes to you with a different gospel, Right, whether it be an angel from heaven, uh, whether it be the apostles or Paul himself, right? If anyone comes to you, even if you see like this glowing, beautiful, powerful angel descending in angelic might and power, and he comes to you and he gives you another gospel, right? Paul says, let them be anathema, let them be accursed. So you know, in the, in the Council of Trent, Canon 9, the Roman Catholics anathemize the gospel. In doing so, they anathemize themselves, right? All those who reject sola scriptura, all those who reject sola scriptura are not saved, right? They are not Christian um, because there's only one way in which our sins are paid for, which is through the blood of Christ. We are either under the umbrella of grace trusting in God, trusting in Christ to pay for all of our sins, or we are under the law. And under the law, you need to be perfect, and I need to be perfect, and no one is. So where we beheaded is just death and hellfire, right, under the law. So those who reject sola fide, right, they are Roman Catholics. They are Mormons, right? They are Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox, right? All of these various denominations that will hold the Bible while at the same time rejecting the grace of God, right? And that of itself is a great evil and is a great wickedness. Um, so, you know, for those uh, who call themselves Christians, right, you need to evangelize. You need to witness to these individuals. Right? You cannot go and portend that they preach the true gospel when they preach a gospel of works, right? Any, any sort of... Um, you know, not straightforwardness about this is uh, is deadly, right? It's deadly to the church. Um, it's deadly to Christianity. It's deadly to Christendom. And, you know, hopefully, you know, that, that will lead to a lot more clarity right, when it comes to Christianity. So, yeah, just take everything like the Brian Jews did, you know, listen to what's said about God and Christianity, and then go and say, okay, I'm going to go and test it against the scripture. I'm going to go and test it against the Bible. And read it for myself and pray to God because you're not alone in this journey, you're not alone in this fight, and God does not lose. Right? God does not lose any of his sheep. Every single one of his sheep, God saves. Right? So John 10 28 says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Right? I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So, and then also we have uh First Peter 1 Peter 1.5, who says, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. 
And then we also have Romans 11, 29. It says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, right? And then we also have John 10, 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know this them. This is and they Taco. It's time to land the plane. Okay, okay. I give, them, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than them all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. This is perseverance of the saints. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. By those whom God has given to Christ goes the sheep of God whom God has given to Christ. Christ will never lose. Like Christ never loses his sheep. So if you place your faith not in yourself, or you, you know, I place my faith not in myself, you place your faith not in your ability to buy holy water or make the sign of the cross or go to confession or do this or do that, or you place your faith in God, right? in God who is holy, God who is righteous, God who has provided the Passover lamb, the shedding of the blood. And when you accept that, by faith, and though your sins are as scarlet, they are as white as snow, and you can know that you're saved, not because you're so good and holy it's and great, righteous. You the first but, thing you ask a Christian to lean upon, you only got a few of them. Yeah. So you can know that you're saved because you have faith, right? You have faith in God, right? In God who is holy, God who is always truth revealing, God who never fails. God, who has shed his blood on the cross, you know, for your sins and my sins. Yeah. So that's how you can know you're saved, right? By trusting in Christ, by trusting in God. And uh, yeah, so I guess I just want to, um, I guess, you know, let, let people see if they want to say anything before we close out. Um, so I guess, uh, Stinky, did you have anything you want to say? That was an excellent job landing the plane, Ask a Christian. Thank you for having this event with us here today.